Welcome back, all you Fabric in the Fleshbacks, to the super, not funny show, Supercast. The Supercast, where we talk about all things superhero in our pop culture space. That's movies, TV shows, video games, and we talk news and speculation, all that good nerdy stuff. I am Mo Depupe, your resident fabricant and commenter extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by the anime expert, video game designer, and lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. Lottie, what's going on tonight? Man, nothing much, man. Just in between watching the NBA Conference Finals, the Orlando Magic won the number one pick, and More importantly, just... Oh you're, yeah. oh, you're talking about the draft. Yeah, well, about. yeah, they won the uh, the number one pick in the lottery, which is good. Right. But besides that, yeah, I'm ready to talk about some of this, uh, this uh, news because I'm excited, especially with everything that's happening now in the comic book slash nerd culture space. Yeah, it's, some of it's not even toxic. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> we may be doing okay. Uh, it's a big week. Like, we're, we're recording a day. Uh, later than normal and thank the lord we did because we got some huh, we got some good stuff uh because that one day delay um but this as usual um <clears throat> we talk about the week's doings and uh so we're the news for this week uh is quite extensive so for instance we're going to talk about uh amber heard in her the johnny depp trial uh you know she's talking about how her trial has uh, affected Aquaman 2. We get awesome new pick of uh, Valkyrie and the Mighty Thor. Doctor Strange continues to go hard at the box office. What is it at now? And uh, we speculate on where it could end up. There was this cool little uh, video released about Moon Knight. Uh, uh, something that was deleted uh, did, we didn't get to see. Uh, we're going to talk about that and what uh, that could have meant for the series. Oh, hey, uh, as usual, we're going to dunk on Snyder stands. <laughs> uh, we're going to dunk on Snyder stands when we talk about the, the fan favorite voting uh, at the Oscars this year. Uh, we are going to also uh, talk about uh, some Kevin Feige news. There's uh, a bunch of that I call it the Feige corner. There's a bunch of things like, hey, Feige talking about... Uh, Loki season two and what we can expect. How Feige had a hand in uh, that cool hippopotamus that we saw in Moon Knight, uh, and how uh, Feige can t uh, tells without saying uh, whether or not scenes are working. Uh, <laughs> which I that that was, that's going to be an interesting one to fight because we all know Feige's got he's got the, his uh, pulse on what everyone likes. Um, we also got some trailers. We're going to uh, re look over three trailers that have dropped this week. Uh, they were all uh, much anticipated. She-Hulk, uh, Multiverses, the video game from Warner Brothers, and also The Boys, Season 3. So, man, we got a lot of stuff. Lottie, you ready to go? Yep. All right, let's I'm do this. I'm always ready. Um, so, these are just kind of some quick things that are going on. It's, we, we're not going to get into the Amber, Amber Heard, Johnny Depp thing. We sort of talked about it a couple weeks ago. Y'all know what's going on. That trial's happening. Um, everyone's, you know, everyone's picked their side. Or, like us, we just don't really give a fuck. But we have to talk about it because Aquaman 2. And so, um, speaking of, Amber Heard was testifying in the, in the, uh, the defamation trial. And she said that... Uh, thanks to this whole controversy, Warner Brothers has uh, tried to get, remove her from Aquaman 2 altogether, or, but uh, you know, settled on just greatly reducing her role uh, in the, the film uh, to the point that uh, apparently you know, scripts were changed and everything and she, you know, uh, she lost a big scene or some big fight scene, action scene or whatever. And uh, the rumor is that her role is going to be basically uh, pregnant, uh, pregnant and barefoot in the kitchen on this next uh, <laughs> on this next movie, or or what may feel like that. So, mm -hmm. Lottie, uh, man, the you know the fallout from all of this stuff, yeah, uh, really as the shit that I don't like affecting stuff that I want to see. I, don't, I honestly I don't give a damn about any of that trial. 
but I have to care about it because Aquaman. So, uh, what do you think about it? Recaster, you know, I mean, just recaster. If you don't want her to be in the movie anymore, I don't know what is DC's, what is DC's like hesitancy to move on from certain actors because you know they're doing it right now with Ezra Miller like well they're just like well I'll say this much so far they don't have any real justification with the exception of like maybe she's sort of causing you know a controversy but like she hasn't been found guilty of anything none of nothing no decisions have been made so in that sense they're they're not really at a point where I think that if they tried to fire her now they would have to pay out her contract. So just that's my that's my assumption. I mean, you might as well. I mean, I look at it like this. You're already the movie's already suffering. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's going to suffer from this. So why let the movie because let's just be honest. Let's just be honest here. The public opinion is not on Amber Heard's side. Yeah. They're okay with their with them delaying the movie and putting a new actress in. So the movie's already they're okay with that. So you might as well just do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like just just bite the bullet and do it cuz you'll make so much more on the back end. You know what I mean? Than saving what? Cuz how much were they paying her? What? Five million, six I'm, million, I'm maybe. Not sure, but um, well, you also have to consider they'd have to pay her contract out and pay a new actor and pay to reshoot all of her. Well, yeah, that is true. This is yeah, but it's, that, it's not it's not as simple as dropping. It's not as simple. I understand that. I understand that. It, it, but I feel like it's just it's a mess. It's unfortunate that this is happening to a movie that I really enjoyed, but. This is this is what it is, you know what I mean? This is so, why we go. This is why in, in the near in like the next ten years, we're just gonna see people just deep faked into things, and that's it's gonna be some, you know, it'll be a stunt person doing all of the movements, and they'll just put somebody's face on there, you know, said so I don't have to deal with this shit. Oh shit, mm-hmm. Kevin, Kevin Spacey's a uh, piece of crap. All right, uh, let's put this other person's face on that body. Yeah. So yay, yay Hollywood. Also you. Motherfuckers, when it, can't y'all just keep your shit together? Uh, whatever happened to those days? But anyway, again, not trying to make value judgments about this case. I just uh, get the hell out of get just just. Can I just have Aquaman too? How about that? That's one Aquaman yeah. too. I don't. However you gotta do it, get it to me. So <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> um, there's a new picture of from Thor: Love and Thunder, and it's. I'm just going to say it straight out. It's fucking great. It's a picture of uh, Tessa Thompson, Natalie Portman uh, as King Valkyrie and the mighty Thor, respectively. And they're sitting, uh, we don't know where this is, but they are sitting in some, looks like some throne-like chairs. Uh, There's some, a a little horn of grapes. There's another character in the bottom right, um, if you can see. Um, We don't know who that is, but I think I do know who that is. So, uh, but I'll I'll touch on that in a second. Lottie, you see this picture, and my God, <laughs> in, in, you know I see this picture. You know the first thing I thought was that motherfucker Conchu better be in this damn meeting. <laughs> I, Conchu better show his ass up in this fucking meeting. I hope if if Conchu is there, I swear to God, I might I might lose my shit. In theater, because I would be like, "Fucking can't you?" Like, it is in the <laughs> fuck you, <universe. laughs> yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, it'd just be so great. Yeah, he'll be like, "Yeah, fuck that shit. We're gods. We need to make these people uh, sufferers doing bad things." Right. But I, I, it's kind of cool to see. God dang, she just why she why she, why are they looking so jacked, man? They you don't gotta flex. Calm down. I mean, <laughs> they could, they hell. Did. Flexing up there, man. That, that's that the entire look, the, the whole vibe, the whole look is a flex. Like, you know, when you look at those ladies, you're like, oh, it's some shit that is going down. What, whatever yeah. it is, I'm like, I want them on my side. Whoever, whatever's <laughs> happening, I want them on my side. Matt, 
we already talked about last week about Natalie Portman uh, at the gun show, and even more. You see that she was yep. she she put in work, and let me say Tessa Thompson, she's not she's looking pretty on point too. Like I, I believe her. I, she runs the show, and uh, Mighty Thor is gonna stick Mjolnir up. Yo, you know what? I did want to yep. call attention though to the character in the lower right. You see who I'm talking about? Yeah. There is yep. speculation based on a couple things, uh, based on who the actor is. That that it looks like a certain actor that we mentioned. We probably mentioned months and months ago. They got cast. Uh, that they mentioned. That is probably Bast. That is probably Bast, the god of the Wakandans, right? Mm-hmm. That looks like the actor that was they said was casted. So we are definitely going to see some real gods. We're definitely seeing this, like I'm fucking excited for this. But I, I don't need this. None of this stuff. I don't need any of it. I'm already pretty hyped for this movie because virtu- by virtue of the fact that it's Thor, that Thor Ragnarok was awesome, and that Taika Waititi is back to write and direct this movie. So that's I didn't need anything. But this, hey, you keep you know, get me get me uh, ready for this because God dang it, they look badass. And I, I just I just hope Conchu is in this man. And he shows cool. up fucking hilariously. <laughs> it would be cool if they didn't do that, I'd be like, man, Feige, come on. You you are usually on your game. Like, what's what's happening? Um I also wanted to this is just for me to dunk on fandom menace bitches. Um th- people talking about the MCU. I'm like, if this is the MCU, Hell yeah, give me more of that shit. The M he you can go get the fuck away because they did not look as cool as this. Like I mean, wait, they're having problem. This is the thing look, that yeah. this is the thing that I I find funny about the 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 Phantom Menace, uh, the the fans that are just so sexist that they're idiotic that they claim things are not comic book accurate. When I'm like, um, there is a female Thor in the comic books, jackass. Yeah, I mean, well, even it's if just it's fun. yeah, even if yeah. there wasn't, I'm just... and it's just the thing that it just it just makes me laugh that they're so, you know, I, I you know, it's just I've came across a couple even on YouTube, even though this has nothing to do with sports. I had, I mean, uh, uh this has nothing to do with nerd culture. I had, I came across a couple of these like weird sexist men that say stupid stuff like. It would be too long to go into, but I came across them, and I'm just like, you're that sexist that you will say something that idiotic? Like, God! It's, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, they get the little echo chamber, and uh, a little man would, with, with, you know, you know, they got some kind of penis envy or some shit like that. Those that that woman right there, her gun, her guns, it probably make all these nerds look stupid. So, yeah. And, you know, I'm sorry, your man, you're not, you know, your manhood is so, you know, so tiny that you can't, you know, stand to see such things. See, Stand to see big, badass, awesome ass women going hard like this. But, you know, if that's your problem, bitch, go somewhere else. But even it's like <laughs> I said, who cares that it's a woman? It's a badass character. Yeah. That's the thing that I get, try to get people to understand. It's a badass character regardless of gender i don't care if they i don't care if it's even it's a transgender if they're badass they're badass Basically. you know what i mean like it's whatever just um i just i do you know i just wanted to dunk on that that bullshit the mcu is looking pretty good to me so you know y'all y'all go you know i don't know go see all of your men in tights that you care so much about i guess so whatever yep. <laughs> um Moving on, let's talk about Doctor Strange and its box office. Um, and its second, it's in. I think it's in the eleventh day today, uh, or mm-hmm. I guess twelfth day technically. We don't have the days numbered, but so far it's seven hundred and three million dollars is its total take. Um, so in eleven days, pretty good. Uh, it did have yeah. a pretty steep drop off on the first Friday after um, the first Friday after their initial weekend. But I think it settled at around a 67% drop uh, from mm-hmm. first weekend to second weekend. So the question here is going to be, does it have legs? Will it 
they have enough legs to get that next three hundred million dollars to get it over the bill to the billion dollar club. I'm not so sure about that. I think it if if I'd say if it we'll see this weekend, but I think it'll land somewhere around eight fifty to nine hundred nine something like that. Um, I would love for it to get to a billion, but you know I'm not sure. You know it's to get to a billion, even with the good start like it had. You really got to have, you know, like I said. Uh, long legs, kind of like Spider-Man did. Um, by comparison, Spider-Man No Way Home uh, had its second weekend was 68% drop. Uh, so, um, you know, that said, I, I like I said, I don't think it's going to, it might hit a billion, but it's going to be, I think it'll walk, it'll limp across a billion uh, if it does. Uh, Lottie, I know, I know you haven't seen it yet, but what are, what are you hearing you know, from people about how you know how well this this film is doing and um where do you think it'll end up i don't think it'll hit the one billion range but i think it's definitely going to be in the uh it's definitely probably go, it's definitely going to probably hit the 150 i mean not the 150 like the eight definitely the 850 million probably the 950 million but i don't think it's going to hit a billion because you know it's just not as well reviewed yeah as, as the yeah thing. I, I mean, what you hear people thinking like, oh, I got to go see this again, or is it just, oh, I saw it? Yeah, a bunch of people are like, oh, it's a good movie, I saw it, but then not in a rush to see it again. Yeah, it's it's not like I'm not getting the the the, the excitement of like Batman and uh, Spider Man No Way Home. Right, and and which and you know, I personally, I think. It's not as good as either of those, so I I understand that. Uh, but I I think it's a it's a good movie that you can you can have a good time with. I just don't know if it bears repeat viewings. Uh, and mm-hmm. but you know the, I think everyone who wants to see it, I think by not next weekend, the weekend after that, everyone who wants to see it will have seen it. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm saying I'm saying around it's it's at seven. I I think around nine hundred nine nine fifteen nine twenty. Probably where yeah. it drops out, which is still, by the way, a huge win. Anybody that wants to act like that's not a win, and in, in, in what world? That's this is how good Marvel is. That nine hundred million dollars can be a quote disappointment. Okay, sure, that's a disappointment. So much so that they're going to make another one because let me tell you, any other movie th- uh, studio would be like, man, I wish I could fail that hard. I could fail so hard yeah. that I make nine hundred million dollars on a, on my movie. So, uh, we'll let you guys know uh, where it does eventually end up. Uh, we want to talk about uh, Moon Knight. Uh, Moon Knight was was really good. Uh, not really good. I think in some places, great. Uh, it had a kind of a lackluster ending. Uh, but the, the action, you can't deny, it had some pretty great action sequences. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, there was one that we didn't get to see. Uh, I didn't even really make it to... You know, actually being, uh, you know, CGI'd and everything like that. So it was a concept stunt fight um, that was basically done by the stunt people. Uh, so it was going to be the fight between him and the jackal in the in the bathroom that we saw uh, at the end of the first episode that we didn't get to see. Right? We just saw kind of like from the outside uh, that where the fight ended. Uh, Lottie, you got a chance to take a look at that. Um, I looked at it. What did you think? And uh, did we did we lose out on not seeing this, or you know, did we? <laughs> or is, was it a good idea not to put this in? The whole jackal thing? Yeah. Nah, I don't think we needed to see that. I don't think we needed to see that. I mean, it would have been nice, but I don't think it's something that we're like, oh man, we completely missed out on this. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's. Like I said, there was a lot of really good fight scenes and action bits in here. And I got to admit, yeah. it, just in my mind's eye watching that, that the stunt people go through that, it would have been really cool looking. Like that, Yeah, it would have been cool looking, yeah. Because they were like dragging, you know, being dragged across the, like the, the sinks and the, you know, breaking the glass and, you know, breaking stalls and crap like that. And we only saw the aftermath. And you were literally saying, you know, Mark was taking him through it, right? Taking that jackal through it. And that would have been cool. But I also 
think it was more effective to make us get, you know, imagine what was happening. Better yeah. for us to imagine. I think it's happened. better. That's why I say it was better that way, especially for the first episode. Like, if this was a second to third episode thing, yeah, show it. But since it was the first episode, the mystery of Moon Knight would have been better not to show it. Because we like, because that's one of the best things that most people talked about. Like, who, what the hell is that? It went from, you know what I mean? The scene where it went from, it looked like it got attacked to where it's like, get me the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, that was amazing. You know what I mean? That whole, that held more weight in fans' mind than seeing a fight that looks equal-sided instead of it just being like a one-sided ass whooping. Right. And, and like, we were just like, I remember what we were talking about on the on the review. What did he do? We what to yeah. make, to make that thing like scratch against the ground to get pulled in? We're just like, man, that's you know, that's how brutal was he? And we and we only saw like the bit where he just finished beating the hell out of its face. Yeah, and we saw how jacked up the room was. I mean, like I said, this is a situation where not showing was definitely better. I, I, yeah. Uh, it was a good good move on the part of the of the uh, directors and the, the editors to not put that in. Uh, but that was really cool. I really enjoyed seeing that. I, I like the, that they're showing some of the uh, behind the scenes stuff there. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, Lottie. Uh, moving on. Uh, it's time for what seems to be our weekly dunk on uh, Snyder stands, which I I want to preface that every time we dunk on them, I want to preface this by saying. I like Zack Snyder. I like just about every movie he's ever made. I liked Zack Snyder's Justice League, even though it's way too fucking long. Um, I liked, um, you know, Batman v Superman, and I liked, uh, you know, Superman. Uh, what was it? The Man of Steel. I liked all of that. Hell, I like Sucker Punch. Most people hated that. So, understand, I'm not shitting on Zack Snyder. I'm shitting on his stands because. Once again, their foolishness reared its head. Uh, and <clears throat> they're apparently, according to some research, um, that the Zack Snyder wins at the fan favorite uh, award for the Oscars. That was, you know, fan favorite movie and then fan uh, favorite, mo- you know, moment in uh, movies. And just remember, um, Flash in the Speed Force won for that one. And then fan favorite movie was Army of the Dead. <clears throat> Which I like, but fuck no, that wasn't. It should not have been like the best movie that. It shouldn't have been close, like a- out in there. But apparently, uh, some bots were used uh, to to put to give fake votes and and to put those over the top. Mm-hmm. Um, are we surprised by this bullshit? I got no. Like, uh, it's what the he- Stan Snyder stands. Don't you have anything else to do with your life? I like I, I like the um, I, I just like the whole notion of Snyder bots. That just sounds cool. Yeah, I mean it. You know it I mean? sounds cooler than Snyder stand. I think if I were Zack Snyder, I'd rather have the bots because you know their personality would be a lot, you know, a lot better. <laughs> it's just it's, it's trust me. These dudes are weird, man. I've never seen such weirdness in a uh in a uh fandom in a very long time you know what i mean i haven't seen such weirdness in a fandom where they're literally creating bots attacking things that are not even in the dcu they're in the mc like these snyder stands are just some of the i mean i I, i'm just i'm just gonna be honest they're they're great they're i i (laughs) What, what I gotta else? respect. Yeah. I gotta respect the tenacity, but it's starting to just come off fucking weird now. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess I can. Re- you know, sometimes some of them have done very positive things. I'm not going to take that away from them. I don't want to. Is it really tenacity to to be standing on a sinking ship and talking about let's bail the water <laughs> out like that? That's, that's not tenacity. <laughs> That's been that you know you don't don't you understand when you're when the cause is is, is lost, you know? 
what, yeah. it's like it's like a it's an entire community of of the you know the knights from Monty Python that's like hopping around with one leg and no other limbs talking about come back and fight. You know? It's that yeah. shit. I'm like, just y'all it just stop. But you know what? Just... Let's let us golf clap for <laughs> gaming the system so that Zack Snyder could win fucking meaningless ass internet poll awards. Congratulations. I guess Congrats. You, yes. you guys care more than anybody else did. Good for you, I guess. Uh, anyway, that's our weekly dunk on Snyder stands. And I, again, reiterating, I like Zack Snyder. Just his his fans. Woo! <laughs> Get out so and and live something. Do something else with your time. So anyway, let's talk about something more fun. Let's. We're uh, we're gonna mm-hmm. uh, we're going to the Feige corner. I just imagine when I say the Feige corner, it just makes me think. Imagine Kevin Feige, but like wearing a Mister Rogers like sweater. Uh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood uh, for Fe- at Feige's corner. Um, <laughs> Kevin Feige, the l- Lord and Savior of all of all superhero uh, things, uh, someone who we can rightly point out that he has in fact uh, had a you know much to do with the way superhero films are seen nowadays and there's there's no doubt that he he adds a little special sauce you know to the mcu uh, just his special little touch so uh, let's talk about feige uh and what what he's been up to uh mm-hmm. kevin feige he did a he did what they call upfront they're talk basically telling the investors like hey uh we got shit going on uh, he's talking about disney plus and what marvel's got going on there and Hey, great news. You like Loki. Guess what? Everybody's coming back for Loki season two. And I'm like, wait, everybody? Jonathan Majors too? Said everybody. So everybody. Um, And I loved Loki. And uh, so I'm like, fuck yeah. Uh, Lottie, everyone's coming back for season two. What do you think? They better. They better come back. Why why not bring them back? You'll be crazy not to bring them back i mean literally well i don't want to say literally everybody everybody of importance even eugene you know or uh, was it gene or whatever uh or mm-hmm. forget the guy's name um he's coming back and and uh ravona and you know all all everybody i'm just like th- i'm just like thank you because you know sometimes you know we go between seasons and you know people drop in and out of the cast and whatever but clearly, mm-hmm. everyone's you know everyone's story isn't over yet. There, I mean, yep. there are some. I, I forget the name of the of the um, of the black woman who's you know she's one of the soldiers that they got. She, I'm super interested in her. She she's been completely kind of like demoralized about the truth about what's going on at the TVA. And also, oh, also we're in an alternate TVA, right? Yep. And the only people that know are so we're getting Sylvie back, and we're getting Loki back. I'm like, yes, I, thank you. I I do want that, and that's what's her what's her name again? Rinstar or Rainstar? Rin, Rin, Rinsla- Rinslayer. Rinslayer. Okay. And, she, and she's okay. going about the multiverse, sort of. Uh, I don't know. If she's looking for Kang or what? But remember, she she's out on her little mission too. Uh, I'm yep. assuming trying to get everything back to the way they were with the TVA. Uh, and then Miss Minutes, uh, that creepy ass fucking animated Miss Minutes, she's gonna be back too. Uh, yep. <clears throat> so I'm I'm really excited. I'm I guess I sort of expected that, but I'm glad to have heard uh, a confirmation on that. Uh, we also have uh, just just some insight into Kevin Feige and you know what he brings to the table as far as um, mm-hmm. you know storytelling. <clears throat> uh, so you know what. The hippo from uh, Moon Knight, that which, I, by the way, she wasn't she cool as hell. Like, oh yeah, I love she, her. I, so just great, very animated. She had some fun things to say, but also really kind of moved the story forward. Uh, yeah, obviously, it was all CGI, but uh, uh, I forget the name. It was her Antonio Sal- Antonia Salib was the actress that did the I had the mocap and the and the voice. She did a great job. Um, well, apparently. Uh, Feige had a direct hand 
in having that character in. The the story goes mm -hmm. that, according to one of the the producer of this of the show in the in the writers room, they had had a board up with like all of these different Egyptian gods. They're just trying to break the story down, figure out who to who to use, who you know who they can disregard, whatever. And apparently Feige came by, you know, as he does, he just came by and, and visited the room and uh, kind of looked at what they had, and he's like, that. The hippo, he points at the at Tawera, you know, the, the hippo. And he's like, I, I don't know if that's in the story, but she needs to be in the story. And that's it. Mm -hmm. They were like, she's in the story. And you know, she's very important towards the end of the, the But Feige just saw and said, that's it. Now, if that ain't secret sauce, what the fuck is it? The man, he he, knows, he doesn't know what the story is going to be. He sees this, you know, this picture or whatever. It's not even the picture we get in the show. It's a picture, though. And he's like, we got to have that. And they make something awesome out of it. That's what that's what I'm talking about when it comes to Feige. The, yep. secret, the secret sauce. The man, he just knows. It's, Lottie, I mean, like, literally, he's the reason. Why? Are you surprised? Or is this just, like, the Feige you know, you, you expect? Kevin Feige just knows what he's doing. I mean... He knows what he's doing. He has a good eye when it comes to stuff like this. He knows how to add humor into superhero things. Because, like I said, the, the the ending of episode what was it four or five where they're screaming. I think that was episode four when they screamed. I mean, still to this day, makes me laugh. Right. And then when episode five begins. She's screaming too, and I'm like, why is she screaming? You know, now that you <laughs> you, you sit back and think about it, why was she screaming? Just, I mean, probably just like, like some people, they have, they just react it's the same way the the energy they get, you know, in the first place. And I thought it was, I thought it was a very good character, like trait. Like you learned a little bit about her in that moment. This big tough hippo, and she's like, ah, um, yeah. And so he did. Here's the thing: Did Feige write the character? No. Did he? You know, give notes about what she should be like. Nope. You know, did he draw the? Nope. None of that. He just saw something and said, "That's the one." That's like I yep. said. That's the secret sauce. No one ever says that Feige sits and writes. He doesn't write scripts. You know, he just mm -hmm. he he doesn't do that. But he knows what he knows. He knows what he likes. You know, the man's worked on so he he's worked on basically every Marvel movie that's existed. Right, yeah, and so the guy clearly knows when when he sees what's right, he he, he zeroes in on it, and I just yep. I love that that's a kind of a window into the creative process at at Marvel, because <clears throat> I've heard nothing but like good about the collaboration between you know the producers and Feige and then the writers and everything and the directors, and I'm just imagining instead of being like ah oh, he, he's stepping on our toes and that's not. No, I imagine they're just like, hey, he thinks it's cool. Let's see if we can make something work with this. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. DC, that's what y'all need. I'll need a person like that. That'll pull that'll pull that out of people. He doesn't have to write anything. He just has to say, I feel like that's good, or that's not so good. Or work on it some more. You know, give me a little more. That's Yeah. So it's the secret sauce, like I said. <clears throat> uh speaking of uh, Joe and uh, I think it was uh, Anthony Russo. He's been he's been talking about what it, what it was like to you know work for Marvel, work on Endgame and whatever. Uh, kind of a little uh, you know an insight into what if I, you know Feige again the secret sauce of how directors and how the creators know they've got something and uh, mm -hmm. with, with particular scenes. And they're talking about he's talking about the body language. Uh, that Kevin Feige has uh, when he's watching, you know, because he gets to see that they call them the dailies. They're they're little bits of the you know the show as they've been incrementally shooting it. They start editing and whatever. It's just kind of have a, a good idea, a rough idea of where everything's going. And uh, he says that you know when they were screening you know scenes for Endgame, they would watch Kevin Feige as he watched their output, and they're like if he's if he's leaning forward, you know, hit like it's something good. If he's leaning back, you know, maybe just you know, maybe scratching his chin or whatever. 
You're like, we got to work on that. Whatever that is, it's not hitting right. And I'm just yeah. like, I, again, the secret sauce. Lottie, the secret sauce. That's what I'm saying. You know, this, how is he doing this? That, that, are we just lucky that we're living in this age where Kevin Feige's got the, the ability, you know, to kind of shepherd these things in? I mean, like I said, he he has a good, he definitely has a good eye. I like, like I said, I, I I'm enjoying what he's doing with the MCU. You know what I mean? It's I would love that DC has somebody like this. I mean, I'm pretty sure they do. They're probably just not paying attention to him, you know. But or her, who knows? But I will love. I do would love to see DC have somebody like this that could bring more of the the DC universe to life. And not just have it just stumble over itself, have infighting and some things are canon, some things are not canon, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. What well, again, you know, it's all up. The thing is, it's all about story, delivering a good story. And um, and clearly Feige, he's, I think, I think by now, most of the people that work around him have picked up on like, <clears throat> you know, his mannerisms to the point, like the Russos, they work with, you know, they, they delivered, you know, f- what was it? Four? They delivered four movies for for Marvel. And by the time Endgame, obviously, they would have been like, all right, we know this is good or this isn't good because, you know, Kevin's sitting up. And I'm like, that's that's what's up. When he can communicate without having to say, uh, you know what, work on this some more. People can sort of yeah. figure it out. I love that. That's the sort of, that's the sort, I mean, they, it, they must be having a, a hell of a time making movies over at Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys. Anyway, this is this has been Feige Corner, where <laughs> where apparently we're just gonna uh, you know talk that man up more uh, than he he already has been. Uh, but I I think it's deserving because I mean clearly this guy knows knows what he knows, and uh, we're better for it. So we'll come back again to another Feige Corner when there's uh, when we got uh, you know a few more items where Kevin Feige figures in prominently. Um, so, all right, we're, it's time to move on to, I think this is the meat of the show. Time to talk about trailers. Lottie, uh, I didn't expect, I, I expected the boys trailer. I did not expect the She-Hulk trailer uh, for this, uh, to come out this week. And I did not expect the Multiverses trailer uh, to come out either. So, um, I was very happy with all of this. We were winning this week. Uh, is that fair yeah. to say? We're winning this yep. week. Uh, so let's let's talk about these guys. But actually, I, I want to talk about multiverses first. It's the lone video game out of these these uh, three. Uh, we don't talk about video games enough on here because, to be honest, there's not a ton of video games that do superhero stuff that often. Uh, so in this case, multiverses is basically what do you call it, a Super Smash Brothers type uh, game. <laughs> it's Warner Brothers. It's Warner yeah. Brothers. But Super yeah, Smash fe- Brothers. Yeah, it's featuring Warner Brothers characters. We sort of talked about this, you know, months. Ago, I think probably like four or five months ago, and we saw the first real trailer, <clears throat> and no get no gameplay. It's just basically setting up the reason for all of this existing. Uh, and guess what? You know what the reasons are? Reasons. <laughs> reasons. <laughs> because reasons. Um. And. It's it's all very stylized. It's showing care the characters and how they're sort of interacting with each other and they're fighting. It's very. It, I feel like it's very Warner Brother like uh, Looney Tunes ish in terms of you know violence or whatever. And uh, God, I liked it. I like like I'm really looking forward to this game. But that that's a good trailer. Uh, I think it really showed off the the characters, every character that we're gonna see, um, mm-hmm. and. To explain how Shaggy can actually survive getting pimp slapped by Superman. So, because <laughs> he goes ultra instinct. Um, all right, Lottie, you saw, <laughs> you saw this. What do you think about the trailer? And what's your hype level for this game? I the main reason why I want to play this game is just I'm being honest. I want to hear Tom's death scream. Tom's. Death Scream is the one of the main things that is attracting me to this game because 
you know, I grew up watching Tom and Jerry, and one of the funniest things ever was hearing Tom scream. His howl was one of the best things ever. So I'm excited. I'm going to play this game. Definitely going to play this game, see how it plays. You know, it's a Smash Brothers-like game. So, you know, Shaggy is, I'm here, from what I saw of a couple of gameplay things, Shaggy's the baseline, so he's the Shoto character. Then, we ha then of course, I'm pretty sure other people are the different characters so i i kind of want to see if they're going to add um uh, uh what is it into the game probably a couple of mortal Kombat characters because it is warner brothers does own that that makes you sense. know yeah so we, we already seen batman superman wonder woman who else is in the dc that i think they that, had harley quinn Oh yeah, yeah, of course, Harley Quinn. I think it's right. I think at the start, it's only those three from DC. Um, and and then oh, what do they have? Uh, they uh, have Wonder Woman. So it's four. Yeah. Oh, is it? Was it Wonder Woman? Oh, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Harley Quinn. Then they had yeah. uh, was it Bugs? Uh, Bugs, Bugs and of Taz, course. Taz, uh, which makes all the sense. Uh, they had some Adventure Time. They had some people from Adventure. They had Steven Universe. Uh, yeah, Steven couple, Universe is there. Um, is like, Samurai Jack there? He has to be because he's Warner I think Brother. He, I think he is going to end up being in it. And then there's, you know, of course, like I said, Shaggy. Uh, Velma uh, was was also, I saw over there. Um, and then uh, Arya Stark. You know, I, yeah. think, I think the Night King's going to end up being. So they really are going across the, and I I just think it's brilliant. Why the hell not? It's going to be free yeah. to play too. I, but if if y'all didn't get a chance to watch this trailer, like the trailer is full of so much, like it's full of so much character, and 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 I don't mean I mean like every one of you know bugs, you know fighting, you know whoever or or mm -hmm. you know Batman and, and Shaq, you know all of them, they're sort of just like you know they don't know why they're there, but they're like let's just beat each other up. Okay, cool. But they're all doing it in the style that's true to their character, and I did really enjoy that now are we going to see that in the actual game i i mean probably not but yeah uh, as a reason to play why the hell not uh, let's let's see superman beat up on maybe scrappy dude that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> scrappy scrappy uh if we could watch everyone beat his ass that'd be awesome so i thought it was a really great trailer and i'm looking forward to it so Yep. Uh, we'll, we'll let you guys know more about it, and we'll probably be playing it at some point and we'll give a review of the game. Uh, let's talk about uh, the TV trailers. So we got we got two of them. One of them today was She-Hulk. So let's let's talk about She-Hulk. Um, She-Hulk, of course, it looks like it's going to... I think it was always billed as a comedy. Definitely looks like it's going to be a comedy. It's called She-Hulk Attorney at Law. And, and we're more or less going to see how Jennifer Walters goes from regular old lawyer to... You know, big green fine lawyer. That's, I think that's, yeah. a fair, that's a fair call. Um, it's portrayed by Tatiana Maslany, who is uh, a pretty, as far as I understand, pretty good. I've never seen her in anything, but I've heard she's really good at stuff. And um, we see Bruce Banner's in it. We see um, Emma Blonsky uh, in both his human form and also as uh, mm -hmm. the Abomination. Got to see a little bit of Titania in there. There's another guy called Leapfrog who I have no idea who the hell he is. And we also see that Jennifer Walters is just going about town, you know, as a big, you know, tall green uh, woman. But also she works, you know, in a new division of the, you know, of the government where they deal with superhero legal stuff. So, so I have a question. I have a question. So in this show, she's not based off the actual story where she's uh she has to stay in that form she's more of like can change back and forth yeah not only that uh that can, they kind of show this in the trailer but the i mean i you know she gets her powers and then bruce is like well you got to learn how to control this and it, yeah. it, it appears she's not the only person that because uh, again emma blasky is in his human form and it is his uh abomination form so apparently he can control it too yeah. Um, and it's this looks like it's going to be, you know, like I said, it's a comedy and there's going to be some stuff going on in the courtroom because she is a lawyer. But also, I, clearly, she's going to be kicking ass on the streets and everything. And she says she doesn't want to be a superhero. But I mean, 
good luck not being a superhero when you, you have a show <laughs> named after you. So yeah, um, but we'll see. I, I'm looking forward. To, I'm really looking forward to this. I I, I know you said something. Uh, you had mentioned like in a text, like the CGI. So what the CGI? What how? Why did it, it bother you? I don't. Maybe it was the phone. Maybe I was looking at the phone. It just looked, in my opinion, like they were CGI. They they put better CGI on the Hulk than they did on her. And you and I think it's noticeable. You can see that okay, they put movie quality CGI on on Hulk, but her they were like, uh, let's skip out on that. And that kind of bothered me a little bit because you could see like when they were both in their forms on screen. You can clearly see this is clear CGI, and she was more of like, oh, he and he was like, okay, this kind of looks like how he is in the movie. So that's where it's like, I don't know if that was that particular scene, or it was just like, I don't know. It just maybe, maybe it'll look better on TV, or maybe she's a lighter green, and that's probably why it looks like that. You know what I mean? Because she's a because she, you know Hulk is a grayish green. You know what I mean? While she's more of the neon green, like how he was in the uh, the 2003 movies. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it, it, this all could be. You know, this is what they said. It's coming out August 17th, so we're we're a few months away from this. And if they need to tighten up some of the CG, they got time. You know, they got a few months uh, mm -hmm. breathing room here. Uh, it is nice to know that it is in fact coming out. Uh, at the end of the summer. So, uh, honestly, uh, just, you know, looking at the MCU schedule for the for the rest of the year, I mean, we got Miss Marvel coming up in June, right? In July, you have Thor, Love, and Thunder. And in August, we've got She-Hulk. So, this MCU train is, is you know, humming along the tracks quite nicely. Uh, we're not yep. going to be without anything MCU for any real time, uh, at least over the summer so uh, really excited for this show i again I, they have time to tighten up the cg so i'm not too worried about that i just i'm prepared to laugh if this is going to be like ally mcbill with you know hulk powers i'll buy that so <laughs> we'll see i will let you guys know when we get i think we're going to get a full trailer soon so we'll let you guys know what we think when it comes out and finally the the trailer i really wanted to talk about yeah the Boys Season 3 dropped its trailer on Monday. And, um, wow. <laughs> we had gotten a teaser, like, months ago, right? They were just like, yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing this. And we're just like, what's happening? You know, it's very, it's very body explody. And so we got a little more into this. And, man, it's very body explody. And also, can someone please do a mental health you know, check on Homelander because my God, if I see one more, you know, if I see one more serial killer smile on that guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It's this, what a, it's the best trailer out of these three <clears throat> by far. I can't wait for this fucking season. Jesus. It's so, it's trailer is so good. Uh, Lottie, man, what, <sighs> what'd you think? Homelander is just proving that he cannot function unless he has a strong woman in his corner that is basically telling him what and what not to do. If he doesn't have that, oh my God, God help us. You know what I mean? Because he just cannot function. Yeah. You know, and this trailer was just awesome. So there's clearly tension again between Huey and, uh, uh, I always forget his name. Uh, Butcher. Yeah, Butcher. There's clearly tension between them. You know, again, because uh, I guess Huey's more now uh, no, a desk a, job. Yeah, he's a government agent. Uh, but yeah, he's a more of a government agent while he's still doing the groundwork shit. Then you have, he's he's very close to uh, his basically his wife's son. So it's because every time he comes, his wife's son is like, oh, my God, I'm so happy to see you. So there's that. Um, what else I was about to say? There's also like I'm I'm just going down the trailer. Then we're going to we're getting like the little shots of like 
superpower for 24 hours and it's clearly fucking with him because he's turning into i guess seeing what it's like to be homelander and i think what's his name is going to be the one to bring him back to reality here we yeah definitely so then the part where i like where he's like oh my god a soldier boy and the japanese chick just gets hit by like his chest laser you know what i mean <laughs> chest laser who I, who who was looking for that a chest <laughs> he, he iron manned her i mean god, he you he did the unibeam i'm like crazy yeah like let me just say uh soldier boy looks like ridiculous like like you're like, oh, it's like Captain America. I'm like, no, it's more like Bucky Barnes. It's more like Winter Soldier. Don't 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 call him Captain America. That motherfucker's Winter Soldier. Um, yep. Also, did you did you notice the the sort of the flashback super team that they, they call Payback that Soldier Boy was leading, and you saw them yeah. sort of doing Vietnam, and she, you know, uh, uh, the woman, the scar, I think it's Scarlet Sorcerer, or Sorceress, or something like that, like exploding people. I mean, just what else do you? I'm just trying to figure out what else do you want? What else could it, we possibly want from this season? There, this what they from what they've shown in this one. This shit is going down. Yeah, and and they they you know it looks like Butcher's like man, we need somebody who can kick the shit out of uh, out of Homelander. Let's bring Soldier Boy out of out of you know out of the freezer. And that sounds like the worst fucking idea possible. But you yeah. know they're going to do it because fuck Homelander, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Just, I can't wait for this. I can't. What, why are we... Lottie, we are eating so good. We're, eating, yeah. we're out here eating like kings. You know? <laughs> we are eating like kings. Like, like they are, this, they're doing white glove service on, on, you know, on silver trays and shit up in here. We don't, I don't know how to act. That's yeah, how bro. Good we, I, that's how good we. I do. can't wait. I can't wait. Man, that's yo. I we could we could go on and on. It's it's great. Good job, Amazon. Uh, I can't you know what is it? Uh, Seth Rogen and all of them that are from the boys. This is, this looks phenomenal. We we can't wait to, for that to happen. So, uh, but we'll let you guys know uh, when another trailer, if another trailer comes out, when that let you know what you think. And of course, we are going to be reviewing that show because why wouldn't we? <laughs> right. uh, anyway, that's all of our news uh, for this week. Uh, quite a good news around that, but maybe we missed something. Maybe we didn't talk about something that you wanted us to talk about, uh, or you just have a comment about uh, any of these items or what we had to say about it. Why don't you get down to the comment section? Let us know what you're thinking. Of course, you can always hit us up, supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com or at supernotfunnys1 on Twitter. Uh, and we'll chop it up. Uh, we'll see uh, what you have to say. And of course, I can't do this show by myself. I need my good friend Lottie to help me out with all this superhero stuff. So, Lottie, can you tell them where they can reach you on social media? Oh, yeah. You can always find me on my Instagram, which is Anukinihun. It's A N U K I N I H U N. Again, it's A N U K I N I H U N. I got a lot of content on there. See what the stuff I'm doing. Also, you can find me on my YouTube channel. I'm back to streaming again. You know, I'm about to start streaming some more uh, No Man's Sky or other games. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, just leave a like, a follow, or a subscription. Yep. Guys, go show Lottie some love. Uh, uh, hit like, like, subscribe, uh, you know, all that good stuff. And um, <clears throat> I think that's it for the... <laughs> For the end of this uh, episode, fifty-one episodes. Good God! Well, it's like we don't like we're professional or something. Uh, we're actually <laughs> <laughs> working our way to the fifty-second uh, episode for next week. Uh, we're calling that our one-year anniversary, and uh, we're cooking up something special uh, for that for you guys. And of course, uh, some other developments. We're trying. Uh, we're gonna pretty soon delve into uh, live streaming. Uh, I guess you call it a play-in chat. Uh, on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, we're just going to be playing video games and talking about nerd stuff. Um, so hopefully guys can uh, come join us doing that. Uh, we'll let you guys know when uh, we're getting ready to start that. Uh, it should be coming up pretty soon. right? Um, but anyway, come back next week, episode 52, and uh, it'll be a fun time. So until then, I've been Mo Day Poupe. 
the resident fabricant and comic extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by the anime expert, video game designer, and lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace. Mm-hmm.